Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Prior to using the Hanau H2 model articulator, it is important that this articulator be zeroed to minimize the slop or play between the various parts that may provide difficulty in reproducing the relationship that one is attempting to reproduce. This is the Hanau H2 model articulator and we'll quickly review some of the adjusting mechanisms to refresh your memory. On this side we have a screw that is a set screw that will adjust the, allow the movement of the Condler element. This is the bent at angle adjustment. This screw maintains this in position. The thumb screw on the top adjusts the horizontal condler inclination a number of different directions. This thumb screw here controls the freedom of the upper member. If we tighten this down, the upper member can't move. The thumb screw in the front adjusts the incisal pin. Now in order to zero the articulator we should set all of the various settings to zero. If we look down the we have degree marks on the horizontal surface of the lower member so to zero this we'll just loosen the set screw set it to zero. I'll do the same to the other side and we can also set the horizontal condition inclination to zero do that on both sides. And we can tighten the condylar balls forward. Now if we take a look at the incisal table of this articulator, most of the slop that develops in the articulator is back so that there's a certain amount of end play in the upper member. Now if one was using this articulator to mount in centric relation, you could close the articulator in this position, or if by accident you happen to be over in this position, you could also close it, and you would end up having uh, two positions. So one time you'd close the articulator, you'd find interferences in one area, the next time you'd close it, you'd find them in another area. The source of the error that develops is back here in the mechanism up above. You can see if they get in tight that there is end play in that area. So this slop is what is to be removed. Now in order to figure out which is the end to remove, the right or the left, one would go back to the incisal table and use the area that will not move with the lateral wings down here to determine which position the pin belongs. Now, this is one excursion where you can see that the pin is not in the center of the table, right here. In this position, the pin is in the center of the table, so this is where the pin belongs. So one would go back up to the posterior elements, and with the pin held in that position, one would determine where the space is in the um, back. On this one, it happens to be on the right-hand member. It could be on the left-hand member, or it could be a little bit on both. But one would maintain the position of the pin dead center, and then loosen. On this one, we have a little thumb screw that loosens to release this threaded piece that's in here. On some of the articulators, you have a screw that's hidden that would have to be released with a small screwdriver. And you can see here that there's some movement provided on this threaded rod. And by, if this is screwed in, you see the play increases. And that's not what we want to do. Now we have even more play than we had before. What we want to do is, is have that be turned out. I have to use a pair of orthodontic pliers here. And we would gently turn this out. And 
and I still have a little bit of play. Now we have virtually no play from side to side. You can hear a little bit of noise from it. We'll take a little bit more out. And when this is established, the end play is taken out, then the thumb screw is set again. Now one would check to see on the incisal table again if our pin was centered down here on the table and if no movement from side to side is possible. Then the articulator can be set at whatever settings you would like to use for your patient and you can be assured that the articulator when closed in centric relation with the balls of the articulator locked forward will be in the same position time after time. It is important that this be done before any cases are ever mounted on the articulator that's issued to you because if you mount a case on it and then you find that there's a certain amount of slop in the articulator, the case has to be remounted after the articulator is again re-zeroed. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.